Hello, my name is Michael Thompson and I'm the CEO at Skyfly. At Skyfly, we are building a two-seat electric hybrid vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. We are different in that we are focusing on the private market with the aircraft designed for individual ownership and operation using an existing aircraft certification route instead of a lengthy and onerous commercial certification process. We are also different in our design with a strong focus on low weight and a very efficient aerodynamic layout. We have the vertical takeoff and landing capability without expensive, heavy and failure prone rotating motor or rotating wing mechanisms. Instead, we have fixed rotors which do not rotate, which are much safer and lighter. We are also different in that we have four wings giving lift and range, where our competitors have no wings and only rotors. Our four wings give a low energy consumption in the cruise, half that of a Tesla, giving a much greater range. And importantly, they add a layer of safety others do not have, delivering glide performance comparable to existing old fashioned fixed wing aircraft like a Cessna or a Cirrus, which of course are not able to take off and land vertically. Watch our other videos summarizing these aspects of our design in the description below. As you will see in this video, this is an aircraft that has been properly designed and thought out by an experienced team of aeronautical engineers, not designed as a financial proposition for commercial air taxis. Our engineering team is led by Dr. William Brooks, our chief technical officer. Bill is an experienced aeronautical engineer who has designed and certified numerous aircraft with over 2,000 aircraft of his designs flying today. He holds a degree in aircraft design and a PhD in composite structures for aircraft. William has also been involved in groundbreaking new aircraft, such as the Flight Design CT, which revolutionized the small aircraft world, being among the first made of composite materials and outsmarting and outperforming other traditional aircraft in its time. He was also on the design team for the Rolls-Royce Electric Speed Record aircraft before joining Skyfly two years ago. The team also includes John Whiten, formerly working for Swiss aircraft manufacturer Pilatus as head of stress, and another two engineers heading the flight control design and electrical engineering who you will hear from in other videos. In this video, William will discuss all aspects of the design, starting with a high level explanation of the main design choices, then we'll go into more depth on specific construction methods and techniques used for the AXE two-seat eVTOL aircraft. Well, the AXE is very much a sort of fusion between a drone and a fixed wing aircraft. And in order to get the centre of gravity between all four rotors, which is desirable obviously for hovering, um, that lends itself to an aer aerodynamic layout, which is a, a canard type. Uh, so the central gravity is uh, right on the, uh, on the pilot's hips, really. So it doesn't matter whether you've got one or two pilots or no pilots, it will fly just the same. Then in order to create a stable aerodynamic layout, um, you need the front wing to be working at a higher lift coefficient, doing more work than the rear wing. And uh, with a canard layout, that means that as you approach a high angle of attack, um, the four plane stalls first and it loses lift, nose drops and then um, the aircraft gains speed again, the angle of attack reduces so the, the main wing never stalls. The, the canard is set up with a bit of dihedral which helps the propeller um, ground clearance and also there's a slight amount of dihedral on the motor pylons as well. Um, and that increases the ground clearance as well as tending to uh, move the downwash from the rotors further outboard, which helps to increase the effective span. Um, it's uh, designed to be uh, quite stable on the ground, so the, the track is about as wide as we can cope with. Um, considering a, um, an eight foot in old, old money um, track for ground transport. The wing mounting is really uh, taking uh, its, its cues from well-established uh, glider design. Um, what happens is that each wing has a main spar, which 
takes the bending loads and the right hand wings, the, the spar is further forwards than on the left hand side. So spars come together like this in the fuselage. Although they're nice and straight, they're offset one to the other. Then the bending load is taken by a pair of pins which connect the two spars together like that but the spar actually just floats inside the fuselage, doesn't pick up any load into the fuselage. That's done by a pair of uh, wing root pins on the wing root ribs. And um, these pins take the lift load, that's the shear and the, and the torsion um, from the wings into the fuselage. Well, um, the um, span of the aircraft is kept, uh, it's all kept as compact as possible, really, commensurate with having uh, good aerodynamic performance, because um, as, as is well known, a high aspect ratio, long, thin wing gives you a, a, a better glide, but it also gets heavier and heavier. So, the shorter span um, gives reasonable glide performance, um, but it keeps the whole structure quite rigid and at quite a low weight as well. So that's the compromise that we have to take. The, um, the spars um, are a tubular carbon spar to mount the motor, and then that runs into um, a carbon fiber a unidirectional spar cap top and bottom that then um, runs into the fuselage and, and has this uh, carry through joint. There's quite a demanding load case on this kind of aircraft because it's similar to a drone. Um, you've got potentially got the situation where you've got um, a maximum thrust on this rotor and maximum thrust on the diagonal opposite corner and that puts a large uh, torsional moment into the fuselage. So the fuselage has um, frames that take this um, torsional load from the wing into the fuselage shell and then the fuselage shell has a central spine or tunnel um, in it and um, that acts as a large diameter tube which uh, is very good for resisting torsion. So that's the way the structure works to uh, keep it stiff. So a ballistic parachute system is intended to recover the entire airframe and pilots. Um, so the parachute will deploy from a hatch here, rocket will send it straight upwards and it will reach the full extent of its parachute bridle. Um, the motors will be cut off as part of the deployment sequence and the aircraft and passengers and everything will all come down under a parachute. Uh, one of the first things about a tricycle undercarriage is that the, the main wheels are behind the centre of gravity and if the nose wheel is allowed to caster that means that the undercarriage is dynamically stable as it's travelling along a runway, it will tend to keep straight. That's as opposed to a tail dragger undercarriage like on a Spitfire or something which is unstable. So that's the first thing. Second thing is that we need this undercarriage to work both for conventional takeoff in this attitude and also um, when the aircraft is uh, taking off vertically, um, it tips up onto its tail um, and then rises vertically. So the tricycle undercarriage does a very good job of keeping it stable when it's moving forwards on the ground and having this tip up feature for vertical takeoff and landing. So the Axe uh, has um, two battery compartments, one in the nose and one just behind the pilots. Um, they are uh, maximum size 24 kilowatt hours each. 
it's possible to substitute the rear battery packs with a hybrid uh, generator which would be run by, by fuel uh, carried in a tank under the seats which is on the centre of gravity so that doesn't change the balance of the aircraft. Uh, the axe is designed to be road transportable and to that end the wings are designed to remove uh, simply. Um, there are two spar pins as I've previously explained join the spar together. When those pins are removed each wing can be uh, extracted from the fuselage. Well, the fuselage has got a lot of compound shaping in it and that really lends itself to composite construction and we need to, as I keep saying, drive the weight right down. So uh, these compound curves are quite good for stabilising the structure against buckling um, but we will have um, sandwich panels where necessary in order to stabilise it. Um, we have made this bulkhead here, this frame, integral and also the one at the back. And this carries a compression load from the, um, these root pins on the, on the foreplane here. Um, fuselage will actually be um, laid up in two halves but will be joined together in the mould um, and cured all in one shot using the resin infusion technique. Resin infusion is good because it um, has no time constraint on putting the laminate together until you um, inject the resin under vacuum and it produces uh, lightweight structures with very low void content. It also saves um, some cost compared with prepreg construction. And I have previous experience of using this kind of construction technique. Wing construction is by um, sandwich stabilized skins. You need a, a nice aerodynamic surface. So uh, the basic wing structure is um, a box type spar which will have uh, unidirectional carbon top and bottom caps and a um, shear web of plus minus 45 degrees, take the shear forces. And that will be laid up into a top and bottom skin molding uh, which will be sandwich stabilized. Um, this is again very similar to um, composite glider practice. As far as impact protection goes, uh, this layout is good because the pilots are right in the middle of the structure. There's plenty of energy absorbing uh, wings and undercarriage and everything around the pilots. So this creates some quite large crumple zones. Uh, we're using um, hybrid aramid and carbon in the cockpit construction, which is good for absorbing impact and also prevents the possibility of a lot of carbon shards coming into the cockpit area. Um, there are standard um, so-called emergency landing conditions that have to be fulfilled. And one of them is a 9G forward impact case. The pilots have to be restrained inside the structure under a force of 9G forwards and any large item of mass which is behind the pilots such as these batteries and or hybrid generator that has to resist 15G forwards and that's to ensure obviously that these big masses don't come through into the um, cockpit area. So the canopy is a one-piece acrylic uh, moulding. On this model, the canopy is just restrained by two pins here, but on the full-size aircraft, there are two flush panels which project from this edge here and finish up about here with a hinge at this position so that the 
canopy will be latched principally here and then the whole canopy will um, hinge upwards like this, um, enabling the pilots to get in and out. It's a large um, canopy giving a, a really panoramic uh, view. So the Axe is equipped with four duplex motors. Uh, we're keeping to one rotor on each wingtip. They will be three-bladed to reduce vibration, and they're duplex, meaning that they're two independent motors driving one shaft. Each of these independent motors is run by a separate speed controller and battery system, so they're all independent. However, if one should fail, then the flight control system would um, sense a, an excursion in roll and pitch, increase the power to the remaining good motor, and reduce the power to the opposite diagonal in order to keep it under control. Each motor is uh, 50 kilowatts, uh, maximum continuous power. The aircraft will take about 110 to 120 kilowatts in order to hover. One of the interesting things about the axe design is the fixed 45 degree rotor angle and positioning the rotors at the wingtips. And what happens is that normally on a wing, you've got high pressure underneath, low pressure on the top, and there's leakage around the wingtip, and that generates a wingtip vortex and that consumes energy. But with this design, there's a component of the, of the rotor wash which is acting downwards. So whereas the airflow at the wingtip would curl round here, it can't because of the rotor downwash. And so what happens is that the um, airflow uh, is, or the, or the tip vortex is actually pushed out, out board. So having the rotor in this location increases the effective wingspan. Um, and so we get a wingspan, which is more like from uh, rotor axis to rotor axis, rather than just wingtip to wingtip. Order your own private axe eVTOL today at www.skyfly.aero. Less time, more joy, amazing views.